Hello all, welcome back. In this video, I am going to cover the AWS Networking Specialty ANS C01 Learning Path. I recently passed the AWS Networking Specialty exam with a score of 785 and I would like to share the experience and some key tips. Frankly, networking is something that I am still diving deep into and I just about managed to get through. I feel the exam is one of the toughest, especially because the networking concepts covered are not something that you can get your hands dirty with easily. Networking specialty exam is more focused on your ability to design, implement, manage, and secure AWS and hybrid network architectures at scale. The key domains covered in the networking certification exam include network design and implementation. This domain focuses on DNS solutions that meet public private hybrid environments, load balancing to meet high availability, scalability and security requirements, logging and monitoring requirements, routing strategy and connectivity architecture within AWS and between on-premises networks. Network management and operation. You should be able to monitor and analyze network traffic to troubleshoot and optimize connectivity. You should be able to optimize AWS networks for performance, reliability and cost effectiveness. Network security, compliance and governance include network features in line with security and compliance. You should be able to validate and audit security by using network monitoring and logging services. You should be able to maintain data confidentiality. You can go through the exam guide mentioned in the description for more details. Specialty exams are tough, lengthy, tiresome. Most of the questions and answers options are very long and have a lot of pros and need a lot of reading. So be sure you are prepared and manage your time well. Exam consists of 65 multiple choice, multiple response questions to be answered in 170 minutes. That gives you approximately two and a half minutes per question. The networking exam has a scale score between 100 and 1000. The scale score needed to pass the exam is 750. There is no negative marking, so make sure you attempt all. Specialty exams currently cost $300 plus tax. You can get an additional 30 minutes if English is your second language by requesting exam accommodations. You can find the link in my blog post. AWS exams can be taken either remotely or online. I prefer to take them online as it provides a lot of flexibility. AWS does not release the results immediately now. You would get your results within 4 to 5 days after your exam. I prepared for the exam for about 3 months, one mainly covering online course and practice test. I have listed down some of the resources I used. Just choose an online course and practice test set and you should be good to go. As AWS certification exams are quite expensive, be sure you are well prepared and confident before you appear for this exam. The networking specialty exam focuses entirely on networking concepts, the design, implementation and hybrid architecture. I have covered some of the topics below. Be sure to go through them. AWS keeps on adding new services as the exam is updated. Understand Virtual Private Cloud or VPC and its components that include subnets, route tables, security groups and network ACLs. Understand the difference between security groups and network ACLs. Especially, security groups are stateful while network ACLs are stateless. VPC flow logs help capture information about IP traffic going to and from network interfaces in the VPC. Understand the flow. VPC flow logs can be redirected to CloudWatch logs where you can create a subscription filter 
to redirect the logs to Kinesis Data Firehose and then to S3 or OpenSearch. VPC peering helps point-to-point -point connectivity between VPCs which can be in the same or different regions and accounts. Remember, VPC peering does not support overlapping CIDOs and transitive routing. Placement groups determine how the instances are placed on the underlying hardware. Cluster placement groups and enhanced networking with MTU and Jumbo frames can be used for high performance computing. VPC endpoints interface or gateway provide private communication between VPC to supported AWS services. VPC gateway endpoints support connectivity with S3 and DynamoDB only. VPC endpoint policy can be configured to control which S3 buckets can be accessed and the S3 bucket policy which can be used to control which VPC including all VPC endpoints or VPC endpoint that can be used to access it. VPC interface endpoints or private links can be used for other AWS services and custom hosted services. S3 gateway endpoints cannot be accessed through VPC peering, VPN or direct connect. You would need an HTTP proxy to route the traffic. S3 private link can be accessed through VPC peering, VPN or direct connect. You need to use an endpoint specific DNS name. Private link. Private link allows connectivity for overlapping ciders, which VPC peering would not. Connections can be initiated, however, in one direction only, that is from the consumer to the provider. Private link provides fine grained access control and only the endpoint that is shared can be accessed and nothing else. VPC Network Analyzer helps identify unintended network access to the resources on AWS. Transit Gateway helps consolidate the AWS VPC routing configuration for a region with a hub and spoke architecture. Remember, Transit Gateways are regional. However, you can use Transit Gateway peering to connect Transit Gateways across regions. Appliance Mode ensures that network flows are symmetrically routed to the same AZ and network appliance. Transit Gateway Connect Attachment can also be used for SD-WAN to AWS Cloud Connectivity. This supports the GRE. Transit Gateway Network Manager includes events and metrics to monitor the quality of the global network both in AWS and on-premises. NAT gateways and egress only gateways facilitate outgoing traffic from private instances to the internet. AWS now supports private NAT gateways for internal communication. VPN and Direct Connect provide connectivity between AWS and on-premises resources. Direct Connect is covered quite in detail in the networking exam. Direct connect connections support dedicated and hosted connections with different speeds. Direct Connect supports virtual interfaces options. Private virtual interface for VPC resources while public virtual interface for AWS public resources like S3. Remember, private WIF has a limit of 100 routes and public WIF of about 1000 routes. If you tend to exceed these, summarize the routes if you need to configure more. Direct Connect is not fault tolerant or highly available. So configure high availability option based on cost and time. That is, either use a second Direct Connect connection or a VPN connection. Direct Connect Gateway provides a way to connect multiple VPCs from an on-premise data center using the same Direct Connect connection. Direct Connect Gateway is global and can be used to connect to a virtual gateway or a transit gateway. Direct Connect now supports MacSec, which delivers native near line rate point-to-point -point encryption, ensuring that the data is encrypted. 
you need to understand active passive direct connect connectivity understand route propagation propagation priority bgp connectivity and how you can use the community tags to control traffic route 53 is a highly available and scalable dns web service routing policies and the use cases with the focus on weighted latency and failover routing policy route 53 supports alias resource record sets which enables routing queries to cloudfront distribution elastic beanstalk elb s3 bucket or any other route 53 resource record set Remember, CNAME does not support zone apex or root records. Route 53 DNSSEC secures DNS traffic and helps protect a domain from DNS spoofing, man-in-the-middle attacks. Route 53 Resolver DNS Firewall provides protection for outbound DNS requests from the VPCs and can monitor and control the domains that the applications can carry. It allows you to define allow and deny list. It can also be used for DNS exfiltration. It supports firewall fail open configuration, which determines how Route 53 Resolver handles queries during failures. Route 53 Resolver can be used to set up hybrid DNS. Remember, inbound endpoint is for DNS resolution from on-premises to AWS. Outbound endpoints is for DNS resolution from AWS to on-premises. DNS query logging can be logged to CloudWatch logs, S3 or routed to Kinesis data firewalls. Route 53 resolver rules take precedence over privately hosted zones. You can use the Route 53 split view DNS that helps to have same DNS to access the site externally or internally. CloudFront provides a fully managed fast DNS service that helps speeds up distribution of static, dynamic web or streaming content to end users. CloudFront works great with S3. CloudFront integrates with WAF AWS Shield to provide protection. It integrates with Amazon Certificate Manager, but it requires the search to be in the US East 1 region only. CloudFront supports geo restriction or geo blocking to prevent users in specific geographic locations from accessing content served through the CloudFront distribution. CloudFront now supports Cloud Functions and Lambda Edge Functions to execute scripts closer to the user. It also supports encryption at rest and end-to-end -end encryption. You can use the Viewer Protocol Policy and the Origin Protocol Policy to enforce end-to-end -end HTTPS. CloudFront Origin Shield helps improve the cache hit ratio and reduce the load on the origin. Global Accelerator provides two static IPs. Remember, it does not support client IP address preservation for network load balancer and elastic IP address endpoints. Also, it does not support IPv6 addresses. Understand the key differences between CloudFront and Global Accelerator. Elastic Load Balancer provides high availability and scalability. You need to know the key differences between ALB and NLB. Understand how to design and implement end-to-end -end encryption right from the client to the EC2 instances. Gateway Load Balancer helps deploy, scale and manage virtual appliances like firewalls, IDS, IPS and deep packet inspection systems. Use Amazon Certificate Manager ACM to provision SSL certificates for encryption in transit. AWS Guard Duty is a threat detection service that continuously monitors the AWS accounts and workloads for malicious activity 
and delivers a detailed security finding report for visibility and remediation. AWS Shield provides DDoS protection. AWS Shield Advance provides 24 by 7 access to the AWS Shield response team or SRT. Protections against DDoS related spikes. DDoS cost protection to safeguard against scaling charges. AWS WAF provides protection against cross-site scripting and SQL injection attacks. WAF can also block traffic based on IP or RAID-based rules. AWS Network Firewall is a stateful, fully managed network firewall and intrusion detection and prevention service for VPCs. AWS Inspector is an automated security assessment service that helps improve the security and compliance of applications deployed on AWS. No cloud formation in terms of provisioning resources, especially the networking resources. AWS Config provides a fully managed service that provides AWS resource inventory, configuration history, configuration change notification to enable security, compliance and governance. CloudWatch for monitoring, logging and observability. I have also listed some networking architecture patterns, white papers. Be sure to go through them. Understand the architecture patterns and the flows and you should be good for your exam. Make sure you are relaxed and get some good night's sleep. Make sure you reach early or log in early if you are taking the test online. Please check in early for the online verification process as it takes some time and usually there are glitches. I prefer to use passport for identification. It's usually seamless. Make sure you have your desk clear, no hand watches, phones away and nobody can enter the room. Remember, you cannot take the test if you turn up for the test over 30 minutes from your test time. That's it. I hope this helps in your exam. All the best. Thank you. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.